back of the van. Hello and welcome back to the van. Paul Casey and Dale Worcester. Dale is our resident fireman who's got a day off today, so he's come out to have some fun with us, basically, and get amongst this hectic lifestyle we're living. In, in the van. van. In the van. In the van. Yeah. Man in the van. We are going to have a little chat about a load of rubbish, probably, but at the same time be a bit more creative. But we're going to have a little chat about getting into scaffolding, Paul. Paul Casey of PDC Scaffolding, one of our resident locals to the channel, I suppose. Probably on more footage than anyone else. More of like your main, one of your main sponsors, you mean? Yeah, that, that's the one. That's yeah, the one yeah. he's looking for, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. So we're trying to you're trying to warrant the sponsorship, basically. So, <laughs> yeah. so I get invited along every now and then. <laughs> um, Paul Scaffolder, what is the crack to starting off with scaffolding? It's um, it's quite an easy route, really. But so you start off. Well, we started most people off in the yard first to get used to handling tube and fittings and such like, and learning what everything is, mm. and then that gives them the knowledge they need. And the first thing you need to do is know how to load a lorry, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because if you don't load it right when you're out, you can't work off it properly. Okay. So we train them in the yard first, predominantly, if they've got no scaffold experience. And then if, they're, um, if they want to then develop into a scaffolder, we start them off on a COTS course, which is just like a labourer's one-day course. Send them off on that and they get that qualification. Teaches them how to manual handle, how to tie off ropes and basically the labour inside is scaffolding and then they go and do that work with the scaffolders then they get taught by the scaffolders or they get explained as a cots you can't go on the scaffold unless there's a fully boarded scaffold with double hand rails signed off sort of yeah you have to be like there's no point giving them harness awareness or anything next you can't wear a harness they're not allowed on the scaffold yeah so they work from the ground level and they learn from what they're getting for the guys and what they're needing next so they get that experience first okay once they've done that they go uh, go and do a two-week part one course. part one's first well yeah, yeah it's like a this. trainee yeah. scaffold they call it now so once you've done that two-week course you then can go and work with the scaffold or on the scaffold but mm -hmm. under their supervision and yep. with them all the time so then they teach them how to do the scaffolding yeah once they're competent enough or we feel they're competent enough and we do that by obviously talking to their charge and and we get our health and safety guys out there just to monitor what people are doing mm -hmm. so once they're competent we send them on that course and they become a trainee scaffolder and then they work with the scaffolders or advanced scaffolder and then once they're competent enough so usually probably about a year after that then the, if we believe that they're capable and ready then we put them on a part two cool. part two is a basic scaffolder so they can put yeah. a basic scaffold in to a TG20 compliance sheet, which is a standard, basically, that's been set of what you can do, which isn't an advanced scaffold. Yeah. So they go and do a two-week course for that, and then over the next six months, they do a portfolio. So it's very like quite a big file. Then they do oh, really? case yeah. studies. Yeah. They have to show what they've done. They have to take pictures. They have to fill out this um, portfolio over the six-month period. They can do it quicker. But I think you've got six months to get it done. Gotcha, so yeah. once oh, yeah. they've done that, then they then they get their card as a basic scaffolder. So yeah. now they they can go out on their own with a part one and put scaffolds up. And then if you want to progress from being that, you can be an advanced scaffolder. So I think you have to, I'm not 100% sure on the time scales, 12, 18 months, I think, 12 to 18 months, one of those, before you then can go and do an advanced course. So you have to do that for a certain period of yeah. time. Yeah. And then the advanced course is a design scaffold, basically. Yeah. anything that's uh, outside the norm so all the beam work temporary roofs um, there's quite a lot of scaffolds you can do hanging scaffolds yeah. shawls like shoring up buildings and stuff like that so you be you need to be able to read it to draw in and be able to put a scaffold to a drawing because that drawing will have been done by an engineer and he's done all the calcs to prove that yeah. that will work and that will do the job so then they can go and again, they have to do a portfolio over the six months again and highlight all the works they've done, all the rams, all the drawings, everything get put together. So, and they prove that they're capable of doing it. And you have to go back and do, same with the part two actually, I forgot that, but you have to go back and do a two day assessment. So after the six, you've done your portfolio and it's all been signed off, you then book a two day assessment and you go back and then, they, then you go and do your assessment for two days and then you get your ticket. 
Same thing with your bars. It's not just a case of a belt and a spanner, is it really? <laughs> no, not <anymore. laughs> well, look, it looks It like used it, to be. When I, yeah. Yeah, when I, shorts and trainers. Yeah, when I started shorts, trainers. <laughs> Nobody you've, come through, you've come through the ranks, haven't you? Yeah, of course. Such. No yeah. hard hats, no high vis. You worked off two boards, one board sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I was. It was crazy what we used to do back then. But it, but it was just the norm. Like that's what people did. What do you think? So I always say, in terms of the mental health side of things, that in thirty years' time, dealing with the cost of what it costs a company for the mental health side is going to cost is going to be like PPE was back then. Was it? I suppose companies would have been like, oh yeah, but yeah. Like the next job you do, you've got to allow for I know kicker boards and the high vis jackets and. Um, certain well, hand it used to be a and single hand round. Yeah, yeah. Then it thinking, went to a yeah, double yeah. hand round. Everyone's yeah. like, "Whoa, hold on!" So every time they add, when they first added these yeah. things, was it always that's going to cost far too much? This is ridiculous. This one that will never work. And then suddenly, no. What happened is they normal. introduced it because it was like done as a, a, a guidance and a regulation law that you've now got to do this. Yep. But then you go back to the contract and say, "Well, I've got to do this now." So the price is increased to this. Yep. They're like, "I'm not paying any more money." Yeah. It's the same with the legislations that you've got to follow, the accreditations that you get, like all the standards you've got to do, and you've got to keep them going. You've got to keep renewing them every year, and it's everyone. You know, you've got so many different accreditations that you yeah. have to get to do the job, but no, but you can't just go to somebody. Well, you've got to pay me more money now because I've got to do all this. Yeah, because that's why you got to. You know, you've got the smaller scaffolding companies that do people, local people's houses for roofers, for builders, and 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 the industry needs it. Like you need yeah. people like that. Yeah, to adapt prices. Around, sh they yeah. still should be trained and qualified and still follow the laws, but unfortunately they don't. So that's why you've got the cheap scaffolding, the cheap jobs, the untidy, unsafe jobs, and then you've got the smaller to medium-sized companies, which we fall in that category where we're. We've, we've got the same setup as a big company, but we don't do yeah. as much as they do. We haven't got as many people. We don't turn over as much as they do. And then you've got the big boys mm -hmm. uh, that, in, that literally will have got everything. We've got the same as what they've got, basically, but yeah. we're on a smaller so scale. Accredited so. up to your eyeballs sort of thing. Yeah, really, yeah, I think we've got 11 different accreditations and memberships now. Yeah. But then you go and work for a new contractor that says, we only use this accreditation. Mm. So well, we haven't got that, but we've got this, 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 this. Surely, this, this. in amongst these other eleven, you, you, yeah, it ticks that because it does exactly the same as what all these lot do. Yeah. No, if you haven't got that, you can't work for us. So then you have to go and get another one. They try to uh, bring in the SIP law. I see this. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, if you've got Chaz, if you've got construction line, and you tick the box that you've got that, then you don't need to fill out as much information because umbrella, they, they yeah. know you've already got. Because if you got that, you've got to have had that and passed. Mm that side of it but then you got another company would use this and that was like we've got so many now and they go well we're this company but we use this yeah and you're like well oh, great so now i've got to pay another two grand a year and for the same thing as what we're doing for everybody else yeah and some of them are like you know it's a lot of stuff information you need to give them but yeah. it's good because they're they're recognizing and when the the bigger tier one sort of contractors and the bigger contractors they recognize that you know what you're talking about. Yeah. You've obviously got a good system in place as you wouldn't have got that accreditation. Yep. And we always try and get like the based. top level of the accreditation. So construction line, we got gold. Chaz, we got Chaz Elite. So we're always trying to prove that, that we're not just trying to get it for a qualification so we can work for you. Mm -hmm. we're, we're going over and above and we're giving all our information is on there. You can yeah. you know everything about us. Yeah. This is how we work. Yeah. And And it tends to get us over the line with a lot of people so we do that's what from my point of view is we're saying well mental health in the industry ain't going to change until you do some kind of accreditation mm. isn't it really that's what yeah, shows 100%. that so you, until you can show you're doing that because companies aren't going to do it really nearly of course they're not because really it's all, it. all comes yeah. to a cost and unfortunately the world in this industry is all, mm. a lot of it is down to cost yeah and you'll see lots of things on linkedin lots of things on social media where the bigger contractors or the good scaffolding companies are going see look this is why you don't use these yeah. scaffolders because you get what you pay for yeah. yeah if you want to go and buy a ford fiesta go and buy a ford fiesta it's fine but it's not going to do this it's not going to be the same as buying a, a rolls royce is it yeah. i mean everyone uses that analogy but it's such a yeah an apt one to use because it is you get what you pay for at the end of the day yeah if you wanted that car it's fine nothing wrong with it but you're only going to get a certain standard yeah if you go for that you know you're going to get the best standard that you've got mm -hmm. so we always try and get the best standard so we prove that we actually care about what we're doing and we're proving to people that we do
Mm. This is why we joined WWE as well. It's yeah. funny, it's funny you sure. said about like the uh, the cost of when new things come in because when I was a scaffold before I joined the fire service. When the harnesses first come out, is it the SG four hundred legislation or whatever it was? SG four, yeah. Yeah, it was like, well, we've got to get harnesses now. We've got to take five pound out your wages every week, so you yeah, buy, yeah. You basically buy your own yeah. harness. Yeah, and you'd, yeah. you'd argue it. Go, well, I need it to go on your sites. Yeah, but I won't buy your spanner, would you? And it's part of your PPE. Yeah. So, like, it was. Yeah. Kind of, uh, but I also think, like, we've talked about the mental health side of things. I always remember, no matter how bad a day it was, when you're in the truck with your your gang yeah it was such a nice place to be sometimes because yeah. they're unloading on each other yeah and exactly just yeah. And banter do you know what i mean and everyone that's gone from like working in the yard to like being on the jobs you've got past the banter trial as well it's oh, all, it's all part of us, <laughs> it yeah, is. yeah there, there's definitely a lot of banter in in the whole industry especially the scaffolding industry but there's a lot of testosterone in the scaffolding yeah it's always mm. been that macho um trade to be in yeah and like if you talk to site agents now that are longer in the tooth they'll always go oh you wouldn't have like messed with a scaffolder because you'd tell mm. a scaffolder to put his heart out on or something and he'd go and tell you to do one mm. and say no I the saying it. i used to yeah. make me more tattoos than a northern <laughs> scaffolder that's like always a slogan if someone had a lot of tattoos you'd just go, oh, he's, got, he's, got some, he's got more tattoos than a northern scaffolder yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's probably right <laughs> yeah. do you find the guys saying that about getting the van the guys are in the yard Mm. Do they get excited or look forward to the day getting out there? Yeah, yeah. because we've got um, one of the guys that came here to work in the yard. He wasn't intending to be a scaffolder, but then he wanted to do his HGV. I said, well, cool. yeah, so we put him on his mm. HGV so he can go and drop materials off different places and, and do that side of it. And then obviously one lead thing leads to another and we need another pair of vans. So we put him on his COTS course. Yeah. Oh, he already had his COTS course. Uh, so we put him on COTS and then now he's, and now he's out as a... Like, and he's doing his part one in, he? in a couple of months. But he said from that job in the yard every day to going out with the boys, he said, oh, I love it, I love it. I'm yeah. so glad that you we had that, because we used to chat here. So they used to, they stay a bit later doing, they come in later and stay later loading up the lorries because obviously the boys yeah. don't get back till late. So, and I'm always here late. So we sat down a few times and had chats about where do you want to go? Is this, is this your end road? Do you, do you want to stay in the yard the whole time? Or is this, are you looking to do something? There's nothing, you know, you're the only person stopping you yeah, doing what yeah, you want to do. Yeah, some people do, some people don't want to, don't they? Yeah. And he, sure. you could see it, like, the clock was ticking in his head, thinking, hmm. And then he come back eventually and said, no, nah, actually, I, yeah. I wouldn't mind doing that. Yeah. And now he's done it, and he's been out there for, for about nine months now. Absolutely loves it. Does loves it. it. And all the boys it. say, oh, send Kieran out with me, send Kieran out. He's great, he's great. Fresh, fresh, Such yeah. a good worker, because yeah. he enjoys it. Yeah. And there's no better feeling than enjoying your job because you're doing it for so long. Every day yeah, you're working, you've got to enjoy it. Yeah. Got to enjoy it. Yeah. And that, as you know, that's always been our ethos here. Come in yeah. with a smile on your face or don't bother coming in because if you're not happy doing your job, it's, it's, what's the point? Oh, it's no, yeah. no life for anyone, is it? No. Yeah. It's good that there's like almost like a career path now yeah. for guys, isn't there? There is, yeah, because I mean, back in the day, like yeah, well, no. you was a labourer, yeah, and I, if I, you I was a good labourer, they wouldn't... That's why everyone says about the, the, the struggle in getting people into the industry, but I don't think people realise that, don't they? It's I knew there's part ones and this and that, but when there is actually a, a ladder to climb... There is, yeah, because about the scaffolders, the pun, on, the pun. they're on very good, yeah. yeah. That's quite good for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is, uh, you know, you can earn some good money when you get to that level. Yeah. Uh, and then they go down the management side, so do the yeah. do the supervisor's course, which is a five day they got a CISRS course now for a supervisor. So it's just about supervising scaffolders yeah. and toolbox talks, method statements, risk assessments and the whole management of the site and the paperwork and the harness inspections and this and that. People don't realise how much is involved when you're actually doing the job properly. A little Ben King, isn't it? I suppose Ben King, he's now a structural engineer, is he, technically? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he was just on the tools, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. So he started off a scaffold and then he was advising me on some, some uh, home DIY that I'd done incorrectly. That we were supposed to have done it. <laughs> I rang him up, I was like, can you work this out for me? I've got a surveyor coming around who's come to look at something for me. I need to make sure I've dotted the I's and crossed the T's. Yeah. <laughs> and he helped me out there. It was absolutely <laughs> fine, thankfully. But no, but it just shows, isn't it? Because he did that and I think he went... He studied and he studied and studied and studied, didn't he, to, to get there? But yeah. But there's also the office mm. side of things as well. Yeah. So yeah. we've got um, most of our people in the office Transport are, are ex scaffolders. Yeah. Because um, 
you need that scaffold experience before you can manage scaffolders, obviously, because you can't tell someone to go and do something if you don't know how, how it should be done in the first place. So you've got that level. It's even the thing, just sort of saying the transport side, but just knowing how to, especially being on the outskirts of London, what you're up against, what the boys are going to be seeing. We've got a full-time transport manager, Lizzie, yeah. that is his job, transport manager, and it's, it's so in-depth when you've got an operator's licence. And yeah. the, the, the longer you go, the more you realise, and the more vehicles you get, the you, the more you realise. And, and there's a massive cost to that. But yeah. again, you go down to the smaller levels of scaffolding yeah. companies and, yeah, they probably haven't got... They probably go with trucks because you don't need operator's licence. Mm -hmm. You probably find them driving around with three, four, five tonne on it when it should only take one and a half tonne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they all don't... It don't I'm not saying they don't get pulled over, but they target scaffolders, the, the, um, the authorities, because they're renowned for being bad. Yeah. And we literally... Funny enough, you, we're talking about that now. Yeah. We got pulled over today, and we got pulled over yesterday. Really? By by the um, well, they're not. I don't think they're called Vosta anymore, are they? Um, and we got green lighted right both times because everything was spot on. Because, Just a routine check. Yeah, 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 routine checks. Yeah, we yeah. got pulled over uh, twice, which is good. We want to get pulled over because we want to be checked because then it h puts yeah. you higher up. You yeah. get more points, and on the systems you're always green lighted. Oh, okay, do they? Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a thing. You literally yeah. score by getting pulled yeah. over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah basically. So <laughs> if you ever hopefully, got... hopefully do. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the target. Yeah, well, yeah. I think once we got pulled over, when a mud flap had come off the lorry that morning when it was on a site because it grounded and it came off. Yeah. So they, they put it on the lorry. We got pulled over and um, we got a red mark against us for that one. Yeah, yeah. We're like, it's like literally just happened, but he hadn't wrote it down on his book. Gotcha. Yeah. And there's, there's a process for everything. And you learn as you go along, but yeah, Luke's really good on it now. Yeah, so that's Luke, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's and uh, it's no, good. We, so we love getting pulled over now because we're always getting green lights and it just makes, you, yeah. makes people realise, right, you can leave PDC alone now. They're, they're good. Yeah, because they get earmarked Do they? as yeah, a yeah. company. If there's a red light against you, and they if they're driving behind you, and they see you got red against your name, they will pull you over more. Oh, okay, yeah. They go, ah, yeah. oh, these lot of dodgy. <laughs> that don't look yeah. like a safe load. Yeah. So we've got like literally risk assessments for how you load in a lorry, and how the load should be, and how secure it should be, and how they should be strapping it off, and we literally got everything in place so everybody knows exactly yeah. how it should be done. Not just and that a, starts in the yard, doesn't it? Yeah, you, yeah it does. Yeah. It starts, so, starts yeah. in the yard. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot more to everything that we do than what people from outside of the scaffolding industry don't don't realise how much involved it is. And enjoyable. Yeah. 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 Well, you want the, to enjoy it. The BBC One documentary showed it, didn't it? It, it did, but plug. yeah. You can find the link to that below. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're saying. Yeah. I was in gold. <laughs> somebody put it in the top corner, but they never showed all my saves, did they? I saved <laughs> no, everything that day. Showed the nutmeg. Yeah, showed your nutmeg. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, that shows Alfie's story because he says that on it straight away, didn't he? About the banter in the van. Yeah, in the van. That's, yeah. And you do notice it. You get in the van and someone's in a shit day. Yeah, and someone's got problems, and, you they, and you're working with someone every all day, every day. It's easier to offload somebody that you know like that. Mm. And sometimes they're outside of the problem that you've got. Well, yeah. most time they are, and it's easier to talk to somebody. Yeah. And See, I say that is the other. route for it, before any helpline, before any going to any senior management, and people would always talk, talk about to each it. other. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, and, uh, and they've got trust with each other, haven't they? Yeah. And the good thing is, my our they all know that my door's always open, and yeah. they literally come in to, to my office. They knock on the door and say, "It's all right for come. Say, come on, mate, come in." I'm not. I don't want to be a company the size where you don't even know the people that work for you. Yeah. I always want to keep it. A, a good size, but a controllable size. Yep. So I know everybody that works for us because then it's more personable. Yeah. It's having a little bit of banter. Yeah, you have a bit of banter. Hierarchy, isn't it? We yeah. have like... We had it this morning being told to put your high vis on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've walked out beyond like, get your high vis on. <laughs> okay, I'll get you. So we have like a poker <laughs> it's, night. It's we do like a poker night in here with the boys. Yeah. Like, there's probably eight of us and a couple of, few of the scaffolders, a couple of people in the office. And we do that every sort of four or six weeks. That's always funny. That's yeah. a good laugh. Yeah. Then they have like um a bit of five aside every now and then, isn't it? Yeah, the five side football. We went top golf the other week. <clears throat> We're going to romp for dogs in a Good. like when it gets warmer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and take the team out there. Because it's just all about working together, enjoying it. It's, everyone's going yeah. home safe. And I just feel like everyone's better off and they then talk to each other and you and you all know each other personally. Well, it's it's easier to talk. When it's just shit going around is it really when, when mm. bad words are going around it's when bad apples Apple. are in amongst yeah, yeah. yeah. we've bad had bad apples here and yeah. i have to get rid of them yeah because you can't have bad apples oh it brings a whole, <laughs> whole yeah yeah everyone goes down 
everyone's yeah. like, oh. Yeah. But yeah, Chris is all right, actually, Chris Arker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's not bad. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, it's been lovely to speak. Yeah, anyway. Thank you again for all your help and support. You're welcome. And we'll see it's you on a trek be, soon. Yeah. We're going to get you on one. My ankle's better. Yeah, your ankle is better. Yeah, it's all right, man. We'll start at the construction sport ski trip. Yeah. We can go from there. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's construction ski trip. Top man. PDC Scaffoldings, Paul Casey, and my co host, Dale Worcester. Until next time, bingo. Back of the van. <laughs>